I'm just excited. <laughs> Me too. I'm really excited. I know that my patrons definitely have a lot of questions. Cool. Yeah. So um, my name is Julia Helena Haddis. I am the author of three books, two on combining magic and mixology, um, which comes from my background as being a witch, but also working in the bartending and distilling industry. And so combining that to make magic potions. And um, yeah, I, I think that's it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's what we're here to talk about today specifically is like combining witchcraft in mixology in elixirs, potions, yes. all those good stuff, <laughs> that witchy stuff, you know? Um, yeah, I, I have the two books that you taught. Well, actually I have all three of your books, but I have, oh, cool. <laughs> these are my, I mean, you've sent them to me. So I know, like, I, I yeah. Have. So like, I thank you for that, by the way, but <laughs> these are the two. Um, I have them on my drink cart. So like, nice. right. I love them. Um, so they used to be on my tea <laughs> cart and now that I moved and I have like a full space and I have a lot of friends that come over and like to drink. They'll bring over the liquor and we will yes. like do little things and whatnot. Um, so what did, what like first got you into specifically elixirs and mixology and magic, putting those together? Like what was the catalyst for that? Yeah. So at this point, um, I'm sure many people relate to this, but you know, my family was like largely Catholic, although I wouldn't say they're like super Catholic, but like in practice. Um, and so, you know, about in like early high school, I started being drawn to, you know, the witchcraft sphere and studying that on my own. And, um, you know, when I turned 18, I started working in a, you know, witchcraft shop for a while while starting college. But then when I turned 21, I added on the job of being a bartender because one of my friends had talked about it this like little you know cheap like dive bar bartending school nothing fancy and so I went ahead and like took this this class and it's just playing with like colored water when you say like bar school it's like wow this wasn't a fancy bar school it was just literally like how do you make an AMF in you know 10 seconds <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, yeah. yeah and when I took that class I um I was just like, so I learning about, cause the instructor would kind of like drop little things in here and especially in the Bay area or San Francisco, there's such a history when it comes to cocktails. And so I kind of dove into that, joined the bartending guild, bought books um, and eventually, you know, bartending and working at a distillery. Um, so, but immediately when I started that process, I was like, well, if there's these liqueurs, you know, that have different herbal ingredients in them. If I'm going to put together a blend for different intentions, like peace, you know, um, or money in an herbal blend, if there's edible variations of that, why not put that into a delicious drink? There's so many ways to do that. So that's kind of how I started. And eventually I was able to do it behind the bar for a short while um, before that bar ended up closing, sadly. But um, I'd have like little weekend specials with astrological cocktails for different events. And um, and yeah, I started my blog and eventually the blog turned into a book. So yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I like that there's like a full linear. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite recipe that you love? Yeah. Like, all the time? Um, so I have a few. But I have to say too, like the one thing is like when you're a professional mixologist and just a bartender in general, like people always want you to make drinks for them. And then like you end up spending the whole party bartending and that's not really fun. <laughs> you know, when you want to like engage with your friends, like I love making cocktails, but like sometimes I don't want to be bartending the whole night. So one of my favorite recipes is actually the um, maple hazelnut old fashioned because it is so quick to make. That's on my blog. I'm not sure if you've seen that one, but it's you know, maple syrup, um, bourbon, it's got black walnut bitters and a hazelnut liqueur, um, but not a cream hazelnut liqueur, just to, cause I have, there's cream hazelnut liqueurs. And that's not what that is. Um, and it's just so delicious. It's so easy to make. And it just enchants everyone because it has like, it's got that grounding, you know, element with all of the tree like ingredients, you know, bourbons infused in oak. Um, but it also has this, you know, subtle sweetness that, you know, sweetening of, of maple and, a hazelnut so it's just like a lovely magical cocktail that I can make in like a couple of seconds <laughs> um and everyone loves it so that is one of my favorite ones to always go to when people come over do you um I mean you make a lot of your own 
recipe or not recipes mm -hmm. you make well yes also recipes but you make <laughs> a lot of your own ingredients as well because in yeah. the very front of a, like both of your books there's all these kind of like simple syrups and I, I don't think there's bitters um yeah, uh, bitters in the second one just to show people how you? to make it okay you know? there's um but yeah, like I think one of my first ones that I made was the chamomile hazelnut bourbon. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, it was so <laughs> good. Like I, that was the first thing I made. Um, and I, I enchanted it and everything and charmed it. Yeah. Um, brought it to a party and it was gone. Like it was it, <laughs> very quickly, and I was like, well, shit. Now I gotta, gotta make sure that I watch it a little closer next time. Um, and I have used, so one of my favorite ways because mixology, like, you know, people love drinks. Um, yeah. and luckily I have two friends who bartend, three friends who bartend. They kind of like understand it a little more than I do. I'm just like, I don't know, just <laughs> throw it in there. And if it tastes good, it tastes good. Whereas they're a little more meticulous about it. And, uh, when we've have, have, have had parties, I have like, we've made certain cocktails that we've like you know, charged and then just like serve to all of our friends yeah. <laughs> as like a, like a big punch bowl in a way. Like we'll just like make one large thing and just like hand it out and just be like, yeah, it's just a good drink that we um made. It's, that's all it is. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> totally not anything else going on, but have you, and I've seen where I was going with this is I've seen really interesting results from that of like, basically cast like casting spells on people with yeah. these drinks do you have any uh stories that like seeing something manifest or seeing somebody's energy change or things like that um with this yeah yeah absolutely and I will say like the chamomile hazelnut bourbon like that was actually uh one of the infusions I did back behind that bar was like the the you know for um a first harvest kind of cocktail, but also for Leo season. And so like some of those recipes ended up making it into, you know, witchcraft cocktails, the book. So I like, you know, that was one of the first ones I did, like when I could do my own weekend specials um, at a bar, you know, for once, because they all have lots of like, you know, layers as to who can do what. So <laughs> when they give you that freedom, it's nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, one of my favorite things to do really is when people would come in and I'd be behind the bar and let's say they were more open-minded. Maybe they didn't want a gin and tonic or a vodka cranberry, you know, um, they'd say like, oh, well, what can you make me? And I would just, you know, hey, you want me to make you a custom cocktail on the spot? Ask them what their favorite fla favorite flavors are, as well as what kind of energy they were going for, you know? And from that, I would pick off, you know, when you're someone's on the other side of the bar, you can kind of feel their energy and and also that collaboration uh, process of having them, you know, taste test to make sure it matches their flavor preferences as well. And, you know, there's just such a shift when someone has a cocktail made, especially for them. First of all, they just fall in love with it, you know, um, you know, and it's just that whole, it turns their day around just that happiness. But also when you sip those kinds of things and you tune into how it feels in your body, because every layer is done with intention. You know, every ingredient is aligned in some way and serves a purpose. And so when you sip it, you can feel how differently it makes you feel. It's not just a delicious drink. It has that energetic component that can really lift someone's day, um, obviously in moderation, you know? <laughs> it's not like alcohol is a cure for everything. Um, and even non-alcoholic versions, you know, using syrups, shrubs, fresh ingredients that are all aligned. Um, and even like instructing, um, you know, I was one time for like witches of Insta, I did this live cocktail ritual and some of these people, like that was the best cocktail they'd ever made. It was for the cancer moon and for tuning into kind of that, that nurturing energy, how to nurture your spirit going forward and what you sip as a metaphor for, you know, what you're bringing into your life, how you're nurturing and sustaining because your body breaks it down. Um, and so that was like, people just were head over heels with that experience because it is different. It makes you feel in that moment charged up. And then if you go and do magic, it's even more charged up or just the act in itself, that energy is now ingrained in you. Um, so a lot of times people are just totally enchanted with it. Um, even when I did like, I don't know if you saw, I did like a, a event behind a bar for one of my books, I think for me, Magic Mixology, um, when I moved to Arizona and uh, people just get so enchanted with it because these cocktails have that energy of the layers of flavor, but also kind of something that they need in that moment, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's awesome. Do you have like a specific way that you like to charge your ingredients? Do you like say a prayer of some sort? Do you yes. like visualize something? Do you think it? Like what what's your process on that? Yeah. Um, so there's there's multiple layers. Um, I'm someone like likes to layer all of the things on. So obviously one part of the process is doing ingredients. But for me, I'm really like a kinesthetic person, you know, like auditory is my weakest level of learning. And so um uh, you know, actually doing the act myself. So bartending is very physical. So when you're like muddling, muddling something, for example, what's the act of like, for people who don't know what muddling is, is like taking this, a muddler, or you could do a wood spoon, pressing down on a fresh ingredient and twisting and turning it. Oh, those are my bracelets. Sorry, I was like, do I have marks here? <laughs> you know, when you're always touching like candles and stuff and I have a fireplace now to burn my candles and I get like these uh, black smudges on myself. Sometimes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I literally was like pulling apart a bunch of um, like old reclaimed wood from a barn. So there's just like these old, old rusty nails. And I've been like saving them, obviously, because rusty nails. Yeah. But, like I just I looked around <laughs> and I just had like like streaks and they because they were red. I was like, did I cut myself? And I didn't yeah. even realize like all over the place. But it was just like a bunch of rust nail like yeah. marks. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry for like that ADHD moment. Oh, it's but anyway, okay. you're fine. Yeah. So part of it is depending on the intention. So muddling is a great way to first of all, you know, start the process because you're doing it midway through your cocktail. And so with muddling, you can think about, are you breaking down the barriers of resistance to your goal? You can muddle and turn it counterclockwise. Um, or, you know, if you're sweetening someone up to you, like kind of, because muddling is the process of blending all those things together in that drink. So pressing down, you know, clockwise, bringing those things in, mixing it together, adding sweetener, you know, the process of adding a sweetener of some kind is um, attraction. You know, what are you sweetening up to you? Adding a citric acid or a citrus of some kind, cleansing, you know, what are you cleansing to help with this intention? And then you add ice and you shake. And like, I like to equate the process of raising energy with shaking like when you're dancing for ritual you know it's a very physical process and it's a great time to charge with intention or just shake off other things um and then pouring into a cup is symbolic in itself obviously like if you're making it just for yourself um one of the great ways is like breath work you know but I would say like if you're behind the bar making drinks for other people you probably <laughs> shouldn't be like breathing at your intention you're like are they okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like you know it just depends on what environment you're in you don't want to like germ wise do that behind the bar but for yourself you can breathe your intention into the fresh herbs or like basil you know before you put it in put your hand over it and charge it with your in I mean every layer I like I probably do too much but <laughs> even stirring, stirring clockwise, counterclockwise, where are you bringing in, where are you undoing or releasing with that drink? Um, so there's so many different ways to do it. And then it's like a potion in itself, right? It's got the layers of ingredients or you can use it to enhance ritual, make you feel a certain way before you do a spell um, or just make a harmonious cocktail to, to share with people. So there's just so many ways to add that magic in. And that's kind of why I love it so much. Yeah, it's a great addition. And also um, I loved it because I'm also very kinetic when it comes to, I mean, my practice in general, like I I have a really hard time doing things that are just chanting or just yeah. visualizing. Like I can, but I prefer not to. I like the yeah. crafty piece <laughs> of it. Um, but especially for those of us that like aren't, open about our practice I think like doing things like mixology or something of you know a drink wise is a really good way to do it with how you explained it because you don't have to have like some it's like a different version of sympathetic magic like you don't have yeah. just like you know really witchy looking puppets or the candles that are dressed or whatever but you can make these drinks and like ingest the magic or something yes um, like that which <laughs> I think is really cool so that's a that's a cool like alternative if you are not open about your practice um yeah where does your inspiration come from with all of these cocktails because some of these like also they're just beautiful like the I don't know if you <laughs> hire a photographer or if you take no. it yourself. they're just <laughs> so pretty they're such pretty photos Oh, in the books, the books someone else did. I did not do the photos in the books. <laughs> well, even the ones that you post on Instagram, yeah. like Instagram's when you're posting, me, but yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> love those. Um, 
My They're partner's just, done a few of the ones online, like the hibiscus moon one. Um, so it was a tall hibiscus one. He took that photo. And then the one that I used for like the bulk drinks, he took for that as well. But okay. um, otherwise, you know, I, I did the rest. Like my favorite is the chamomile rose. I, the one, I think that's like the most recent uh, new cocktail that I did. Um, I we try to look, look at it right now. <laughs> But yeah, so um, I do most of it, you know, it's just a, a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. I mean, you know, because you do photography, although maybe <laughs> you've had more experience. It's just like, yeah, oh, and like ordering the recipe and writing the blog is like, you know, the <laughs> and then like doing the photography. I'm like, oh, I got to take like, I've got so many photos for every single drink on my phone until I get like a shot that I really like. Yes. Yeah, there's, um. <laughs> Uh, this was like wow, like back on the recipe, not the photographer. Sorry, uh, yeah. <laughs> my brain is just like dee, 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 dee. so. You know, it is what it is. Uh, the yeah. blockage buster, the blockbuster. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, the blockage buster. Let me just double check. I will say, like, when I'm writing these recipes, the names, um, like I'm just using like these weird riff names, and some of them didn't get changed for the book. So, like for example, Dreamwork Aviation Riff was not supposed to be the final name, but I forgot <laughs> to change it. Yeah, it's called the Blockage Buster. Sometimes okay. I forget what they're called because they have a working name and then like the official title. Yeah. 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 So that's one of the ones that I I hope my friends don't. I don't think my friends watch like my in interviews. Um, I think they watch whole vlogs, <laughs> not my interviews, but whatever, it's fine. So that's one of the ones that I made, like, kind of in a big, yes. like, bowl sort in, like, a, you know, a, a hefty um, way. And I didn't need a lot. Like, I didn't need them to be drinking these all night long, right? But uh, a friend of mine, who the one that is a bartender, she helped me. So we made that and just, like, passed it around. And obviously, like, all of our, we have so many friends in our little village of maniacs that, yeah. like, not everybody's going to love the drink. So I was like, look, I just need you to try it. And some of them, like, you can just tell, it's just like a bunch of like dumb boy energy. So like we handed it to them and instead of like, it's like a cocktail, like you're like sipping and it's like just a little bit, right? We gave them a little bit. Some of them just knocked it back like a shot. And like, yeah, it's kind of good. We were like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's um, funny. But the interesting part about all of that was that uh, we tried to kind of infuse that with you know blockbusting energy and like yeah like getting rid of any of those obstacles in their life that was holding them back from like better things for them and like I know that some people are going to be like Olivia you cast spells on your friends without you telling them yes I do all the time um <laughs> they know that I cast they just don't know when or what I'm doing <laughs> so yeah um, but it was interesting because the next six months were really interesting for each and every person. Um, and it was more of like a, like a new year. I think we did it on new year, new years. And the next year we just started seeing things like kind of like change. I don't want to say like end or break apart, but like sometimes, but you know, things change and people started getting a lot more opportunities in different ways. And it was just really yes. cool to see that there was like that, <laughs> you know, like underlying thing happening for the next six months to a year. Um, right after we did that spell collectively as a group, it wasn't just one person or the other. Um, yeah. And of course there were like other spells that went along with that, but I loved that. So then once that happened, I was like, I'm fucking hooked. And now I'm using drink spells all the time. And yeah, so it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, do you yeah. ever use, oh, wait, I have another question. Have you ever seen this book? <laughs> no, I actually haven't. I, okay. even when I was working at the metaphysical store, I didn't come across that. It's, I don't know if it's still in print. I have like this really old one that's like a artsy like child's book that love potions but I don't have that one that's cool no it's um it's about like aphrodisiacs and stuff but there oh, is I'll, I love I'll that. send you a photo I have one yeah. on Instagram she made this specific drink made it like a punch just like a, a party that she brought it to and a bunch of people were saying like what did you put in there because like my boyfriend and I that have been like going through a slump all of a sudden we were just like all over each other and then like people will <laughs> like she was like within an hour people were just like flirting with each other like super hardcore yeah. but it was just cool because again like that's that's kind of like magical right 
Um, yeah. I'll have to send you that recipe uh, or a couple of them. Could and see Yeah. And, and I'll say too, like when you mentioned, like, here's the thing is when it comes to like food and drink, no matter what you're putting in it, you're always going to influence someone. Like it's just impossible if it's alcohol or a, a tea, like all of these things influence. So I like to think of it as you're making it done with intention, you know, um, and promoting like a certain type of positive energy. So um, obviously like ethics play a role, you know, with spell work to each person to decide on their own where that is for them. But at the same time, no matter what, when you're feeding someone, if you're giving them chocolate, you're causing some kind of chemical reaction. So why not do it? And, you know, with this beautiful intention of, like you said, like, a, you know, love potions, like have everyone have a great time or a harmonious cocktail or whatever it may be. So especially yeah. Mercury Retro, great. <laughs> you know, having a communication cocktail is definitely great. Oh. If you're having any kind of gathering during that time. So now there's an idea. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. Your retrograde cocktail for communication. Yeah, that's actually the um the mercurial grounding elixir. So I don't know if this is like old stuff. Uh if you're familiar with PantheaCon at all. Maybe that not. sounds really familiar. Yeah, yeah. It used to be like this thing they did in San Jose for a while, but then um they stopped and there's a new thing happening now, except the pandemic kind of is changed all of that a little bit and so I was bartending for a coven for um, PantheaCon and you know in their hotel suite and um, I specifically made their mercurial grounding elixir because it was mercury retrograde and then when you get a bunch of like pagans and witches together doing all kinds of rituals there's just a lot of energy going around and so yeah. that was one of the drinks that I served to like help ground people help with communication you know because it's got the juniper based gin lavender and chamomile in there and mint as well just to really help with clarity and dealing with the mercury retrograde with all that energy so that's like one of you know my favorite ones and even people who do not like gin tend to love that cocktail um so it's yeah this is you can really like transform like the energy of an event with those kinds of things yeah do you have like drinks that you use as offerings or do you work with spirits at all or yeah yeah so part of that is um I have to be honest like I obviously when I'm creating a recipe there's a magical intention which kind of helps me put together what the process of the different ingredients and how that can influence. And also when I'm doing it on my blog, I have to consider how accessible is this? Can I come up with a replacement for that? So if someone doesn't want to make this syrup, you know, could they just make a classic simple syrup or whatever? Um, and the whole process of just creating a recipe, um, I have to also test for flavor, not just magic. And so I end up having a lot of leftovers because if I drink all of that, you know, I'm tasting to make sure the balance is there. But if I drank the full thing, like I would never be able to finish a cocktail and I would just be wasted all the time. <laughs> um, so I end up with uh, just like these beautiful like liqueur recipes or, um, you know, syrups or different cocktails that I end up giving, you know, as an offering to spirit. And they just like gulp it down. You know, you can just like see it going down and going down. And like my favorite was I was working on a pumpkin spice liqueur and giving that offering, you know, for abundance and stuff, just how quickly it went down and seeing the manifestation happen because pumpkin spice has like all the ingredients to bring in prosperity. So it was, yeah, I use it for spirit offerings um, all the time. I have to ask this also. I have a friend who's insane and likes Everclear. Do you have any recipes for me that I could possibly put that in to make it not taste like Everclear? <laughs> you know, that's that's really surprising to hear. I'm, and this reminds me of like, so my family's from Poland and, uh, I mean, in Poland, there's a much higher proof of alcohol that's allowed. And like my dad will just drink it straight. Um, and, and like, I, I, those are the kinds of alcohols that are used for making bitters, you know? So like people use Everclear and those really high proof spirits to make bitters or, or tinctures of some kind um, to add into a recipe. So I cannot say that I can think, all I can say is like, basically Everclear is not uh, the same amount of, of watered down that vodka is. So if you can find some way to water it down a bit, like double the drink ingredients with the same amount of alcohol or half the amount of ever, like that's really, I think the only way you could probably overcome that flavor. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it's just crazy. So <laughs> 
I mean, people do drinks with 151, but the fun with that is 151. You set that shit on fire. Obviously, fire safety with that, but that makes it for fun fire tricks. So that's kind of the bonus of having a higher proof alcohol and something, but that's also dangerous. I do not recommend to the average person. <laughs> right. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. I bet that's a lot of fun to do is like the fire tricks with. I've seen that happen before. Yes. A friend of mine loves like really nice cocktail bars and lucky me, I'm friends with her. So I get to go to those places and see um, all these really awesome and very skilled bartenders like create these insane, you know, drinks that are also visually pleasing to watch get made with like fire and like the smoking. Um, There's one where they, again, like this, this is why I love like the potion aspect of it because when you go to see a cocktail made like a specialty cocktail they have there was a whiskey I think it was like some some kind of like old-fashioned but it was based off of uh Beauty and the Beast and so it was like a whiskey drink but they smoked it so like the whiskey was there and then they uh, you know did the smoke and they have those like really beautiful glass encasements yes rose in there smoked it and put the glass encasement over and you just get to sit there and stare at your drink for a little bit like just like yeah. the gorgeous and I was just like this is so fucking witchy and I'm just yeah. obsessed with like the smoke around it and it's like uh yeah and I was like I cannot wait to drink the shit up <laughs> yeah. yeah and you know what those things actually aren't that complicated so I would do that behind the bar all the time like my favorite thing is like just that experience of bringing them this you know fancy cocktail and then you just lift up the cloche you know the uh, encased glass mm-hmm. and just like the smoke coming through people love to film it or even like a butterfly pea flower when you add yeah. acid and change the color people love filming it um and uh yeah I mean you can actually get those smokers online that are a little more expensive like 50 bucks but you just get some wood chips turn it on um get a just like I mean if you smoke weed or something I you know you're in Colorado right so it's legal there (laughs) it's just like smoking a bowl you know so you turn the device on put the wood chips light the chips um and it just drags the smoke from the wood chips and you like put the tube under the glass encasement and it smokes the cocktail that way and infuses it so that one like you just need the right devices for that um it's definitely safer than fire tricks Uh, one of my favorite fire tricks is i think you've seen me do before because this is a simple one people can most likely do at home although definitely be careful so fire fire safety yes yes is the citrus peel. Um, You know, when you heat the citrus Mm. peel over a match and it warms up the oils and then you squeeze it and you get this massive flame. I love doing that for like working with fire signs or even if you sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon or some kind of spice above a match, how it gets those, you know, little sparks. Um, Those are like simpler ones, not as, uh, you know, not like um, a lit on fire scorpion bowl. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I, my eight to nine years working in like uh, food industry, but also there's always bars there. Really cool to watch uh, some really skilled people come in. And I learned a lot. I don't even drink that much, but you know, like I learned a lot and it was it like, I, I, what I first thought, oh, it's just a cocktail. Like cocktails are just a tastier way to consume alcohol. But then like learning that there was like this whole art behind it and it was craft. I just, I, I'm really grateful for that. I thought it was really cool. Um, Yeah. The whole act of just drinking a potion in itself, like it is really magical and you can feel that energy transformation. And I, it helps like, like you said, like just remove those blockages to help, like, especially when I'm doing magic and stuff to bring in those blessings. So it's one of my favorite things to do. And it's, we didn't talk about it that much, but it is connected to a lot of ancient worship as well. Like it's not a new thing. Um, so it, there's just so much to it and all the layers. Well, what kind of resources do you have for people who want to know more about the history, yeah. and the, the art of it? Yeah. So there's actually, um, I have to probably find the name. There's um, a resource online that I like to use. Um, it's like a ancient history and you can like look up alcohols that's where I've found specific things about um you know uh, ancient Hindu practices with their soma recipe um so the fermented um blue lotus and other ingredients they've used to connect to their moon deity um and obviously with those the good thing about that is you can go and then find the studies there's also a couple other things so I'm going to get up here and hopefully my backside is not ugly (laughs) 
Um, so there's like a couple, like there's this edition of National Geographic, which goes in to the birth of booze. Although I will say a lot of times these resources don't talk about mead. Um, so they just talk about like beer or wine. Um, but, you know, obviously finding anthropological resources and studies. There's also drink by um, Ian Gately. And let me see if this doesn't come across backwards. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> I'll, I'll add links. I'll add links. Yeah. yeah. Um, cultural history of alcohol. So this is really great. It talks about, you know, in ancient Sumeria, um, you know, how they had the lap to seal with the sacred act of drinking beer and the, the beer goddess that they had in Cassie um, for, you know, she was believed to be in every drop of beer. And it just goes so far back. Like the beginnings of alcohol are sacred they're used to connect to, to deities and, and spirits. So there's a lot there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Cause that's again, something that I would have never, I mean, like now thinking of it as like, yeah, of course, why wouldn't it be? But <laughs> not something that was like obvious to me, I guess. For some yeah. Reason. Yeah. It's called spirits for a reason. Like even in Poland, you know, uh, vodka comes from water of life. We say, well, we pronounce water as vodka and, you know, so you can hear vodka, vodka, like it's, all of these things were um, spiritual to ancient peoples in some way or another. Bitters, bitters come from healing tinctures, you know, um, drinking shrubs because they didn't have refrigeration. So the local folk healer using infused um, drinking shrubs, just like vinegar, you know, sugar and a fresh ingredient to preserve those healing qualities. So all of that kind of connects, you know, to that healing and then green witchcraft and ancient practice. And the best part is we have the technology to make it fancy and delicious. Yes. So, <laughs> the flavor's yeah. definitely improved. <laughs> yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, we're coming up on time. So I'm going to pull you over to Patreon because they have a bunch of questions for you. But this is the end of the public yeah. Q&A interview type of thing. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I will leave all of the links to find Julia down below um, and her books and all of that good stuff. I think you should definitely check it out. But otherwise, if you want to watch the Q&A and be involved in future Q&As for other guests, go to my Patreon and you can find that there. So yeah, thanks for, thanks for joining us here. Thank you.